that you found out from your father and from his uncle uh, and because most people see you and they think of a, a prophecy right. teacher, mm -hmm. uh, a Jewish roots teacher, mm -hmm. and they don't know the supernatural. For instance, I don't think many of you know this. Did you know that he has an angel that has followed, he's third generational mm -hmm. angel that follows him now? What happens when that angel shows up? I, I, can, I can say this, you know, really before the Lord, that I don't sense him all the time. But probably on ten different occasions, out of absolutely, totally unexpected, not praying for it, not asking for it, when I have been in services, the shifting of the atmosphere is felt by everyone there. Even, even people that are backslid or away from God can sense it. And there's usually almost a weeping that comes. There's a real uh, holiness of God that shows up. There's a real just, just uh, awareness of God and awareness of the Holy Spirit that, sh that comes. And then what always happens, there either is a shifting in the sermon, totally without notes, without... The, I'll lay the, scripture, the Bible on the pulpit and just go into a realm of ministry. Or there comes a very heavy prophetic word, totally unexpected. Uh, where the Spirit of God gives a prophetic... Now, a prophetic word is an utterance under inspiration for the Holy Spirit without tongues and interpretation. If you're, if you're charismatic Pentecostal, you'll understand what I'm talking about there. And the other thing that I've noticed is that on one occasion we were in a transition in the ministry, a very heavy transition, and I was so down because more weight was coming to me, more heaviness and weight. And I, I was complaining and said, Lord, how can I do this? Well, you've asked me to do this. I can't physically do this. And I'm... <laughs> I can't hardly talk. This is what happens to me when we talk about this. And I'm sitting in this big chair at my desk and I turned this way and I felt the hand come to the chair. When, when the hand came to my chair, every hair on my body stood up. See, the Holy Spirit's presence works from, from let's say it in John 7, from the belly out. An angelic presence is around you. You'll, you'll never feel it in. You'll feel the anointing stir, but you'll feel it out here. Well, every hair on my body stood up, and all of a sudden, a weeping came to me. And the weight, within 10 minutes, the weight that was on me came off of me. And from that moment on, and, and really I made a mistake. I made a mistake. My daddy always said, now Perry, when you feel this presence, stay in it. Don't jump out of it. But I got so excited. This, this sounds crazy. I jumped up and I ran through my office and I ran to my secretary's office, beat the door down, knocked the door and said, you won't believe what just happened. Oh my God, you won't believe what just happened. Well, they're all excited. And I run to another office. Then I realized, what am I doing? So I go back in there hoping it's there, and it's not there now. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, Perry, what did you do? I mean, what, yeah, would, what have, did you do? <laughs> no, what would have happened if I would have stayed there? Now, let me say this, and we're going to kind of flow this way for the people. One of the mistakes that I see in the contemporary church is we customize services for the benefit of the people. Isn't that called seeker-sensitive? Yes, but it's all customized for a time frame. I've heard, I've heard pastors say, we're going to do a 55-minute service. Everybody knows how long the sermon and the, and the music is going to be. And here's the disservice we do to people. If we get them at the edge of the holy place or we get them into the presence of God, we then pull them out prematurely. And it's like a premature birth. When you have a premature birth, you, don't, you have an undeveloped baby. Something, in, it could be the heart, the lungs, or physically, it doesn't, it doesn't totally develop, and it has to stay in the hospital so long till the, till the full development comes. And we, we, we pull people close to the presence of God. And I'm, I'm not saying everybody does this, but too many do. And then we want them out by 12 because we're active. The kids got ball in the afternoon. They want to go to the mall, whatever the case is. And I've, I feel so much for this generation because a lot of them have experienced church, but not the glory. And, and so what we do, we, 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 we customize the service to adjust it to the not needs of the people. 
and we, but we adjust it to the activities of people. Mm -hmm. And what happens is you cannot encounter depths with God until you move in the progression of the Spirit of God. And so, and I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this very carefully, but I grew up around, and some of the folks in the audience, or some of those watching may understand this, but I grew up around the old classical camp meetings. And the camp meeting was where you had a tent or you had a big metal building. And back then we all wore suit and ties when it was 104 degrees, which I never, <laughs> I never, thank the Lord we've come through that now, you know, but back in the day... And what would happen is as the presence of God would move, as the presence of God would move, they allowed the anointing to flow, and then altar services would break out. But I, I can remember not, not leaving the altars till, till midnight or later. And you would leave so refreshed and so into the glory that, and this is the truth, you could live off of little sleep. I've had revivals that went 7, 8, and 11 weeks, and we didn't miss a service a, a night. The people never missed, missed a night. And we didn't get out of church till 1 and 2 in the morning, and they're getting up at 5 and 6 and going to work. And people say, how could you do that? Because when you are in the glory, you lose the concept of time. Time becomes irrelevant. Time becomes irrelevant in the glory of God. What, what you have shared is so important. Did, did you get that? You're right on the edge of God showing up. And when God shows up, everything is possible. Everything. Yes. yes. And yeah, 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 well, it's noon. I got to run. Right. Bye bye. Right. Right. Let's switch gears for a second. Yeah. OK. Because I, you have revelation that you learned from rabbis, yeah. and, and I'm Jewish, and I've never heard this revelation <laughs> right. before. For instance, supernatural language, tongues. Yeah. I've always been told, well, that didn't start till Day after, Pentecost, yeah, right. after Pentecost. Right. But you have learned different. Tell me about it. All right. That. It was in the 1990s, Rabbi Yehuda Getz was the head rabbi, one of the head rabbis in Jerusalem at the Western Wall Heritage Foundation. We met him at night. We would go in there at 10 and 11 o'clock at night because he would pray at night from like 11 till 3 in the morning. That was his prayer time. And he asked me what I believed. i got to tell you, this, this is humorous. So, and, and there's a picture of him right there. That's Rabbi Getz. That's the young Perry Stone. On the, the, people can see that. The younger, the younger version. So he, what he's doing right there, and I don't want to get sidetracked, he's showing me where the Ark of the Covenant was hid in a certain location under the Temple Mount. And I don't want to get into that. I'll be sidetracked. So he, be, he asked me what I believed. And I said, you know what? He's kind of a mystic. So I'm going to just lay it on him. I said, I believe in the covenants. I believe in re the redemption. of." Co and I said, I believe in casting out devils. And he looked at me and he said, um, there's a man at the Western Wall who prays, who thinks he's Elijah, but he's not. Could you go cast the devil out of him for me? <laughs> <laughs> I was hilarious. And that kind of bonded us at that point. And then I said this to I'm him. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I said this to him. I said, I also believe in speaking with other tongues, which is the prayer language of the Holy Spirit. And he looked at me without blinking. He said, oh, you mean the language of God? And I went... Wait a minute. What do you know about the language of God? I'm thinking, I'm thinking he's thinking the Hebrew language or something right. like that. And he said, well, we have a Jewish tradition. And he said, I believe it. That on the Day of Atonement, when the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies, God gave him a tongue to communicate in a language that he was not familiar with that only him and God could talk in. And no one could hear it. And I said, well, why would that be? He said, so that Satan and the spirits could not interfere with what he was saying. So, in other words, it was, it was a language of, of, of God or a language of heaven that was known only to God and the priest. And he said, I said, well, uh, what would happen later? He said, well, he would leave and exit the holy place, and he couldn't speak it again until the next year. So I was, I, I, what happened with that is I became so curious about some of the uh, traditions. And, and let me say this. The Jews, as you know, said, being Jewish, have the Torah, but they also have the oral tradition. And some of the oral traditions can be based on rabbinic commentary, which can be a little off, obviously. Of but there are oral traditions that were handed down for generations and generations and later put in writing that you can actually go to certain scriptures and you can see how it all pieces together. So you and I know, the reason I tell people don't read a lot of the commentaries, you know, because it can get off and people it's can't discern. Sure. Yeah, it's a mix. It's a mix. But in some of this, 
So I, I, I ended up writing a book called The Code of the Holy Spirit and used that as the introduction. But if I can go ahead and talk about the breath of the Holy Spirit for a minute. Or, I'll tell or, you what. Yeah. I want you to hold that thought. You thought that was amazing that they spoke in tongues? Wait till you hear about this. I mean, th th this is even more amazing. Uh, but if, uh, I just want to mention something about Perry's father's uncle. Mm -hmm. His name was Uncle Rufus. Did you know that Uncle Rufus was, uh, how, how educated Third grade. Was he? Third, Third grade only. Third yeah. grade only. Uncle Rufus could speak in any language mm -hmm. of anyone he spoke to. Yes. Third grade education and preach the gospel. That's right. And Perry prophesied, I heard it come out of his mouth a little earlier before we went on the air, that these gifts that were imparted to him, right. he is going to start imparting them to you. We'll be right back. Hallelujah. Okay, Terry, yeah. uh, th this is amazing to me. Tell me about the breath of the holies okay. from these ancient rabbis' uh, yeah. teachings. Okay, there was a tradition that in the tabernacle of Moses, you knew when the glory of the Lord came down by, number one, the sound of a man breathing. It would be like breath, like, <sighs> like, like a wind blowing. And the second way you would know is the, the, in, where you have the chamber of the inner court and the Holy of Holies, we call it, where the inner curtains were. The curtains would start moving like a man's lungs breathing. They would expand in and out. And this became known as the breath of the Holies. Now what is interesting is in Hebrew, the word breath, wind, and spirit is the same word. You have to read the context of the verse to see what it's speaking about. It's ruach. And the ruach hakodesh means the Holy Spirit. Now, if you, if you start tracing this down, this is in the tabernacle of Moses. It became known as breath of the holy place, breath of the holies, holy breath, holy spirit. Hmm. So, in other words, that breathing sound was a manifestation of the Urach HaKodesh, which is the Holy Spirit or the Spirit that's holy, the Spirit of God. And the interesting thing about that is if we come to the New Testament in Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 4 on the day of Pentecost, there is a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind. And the Bible says it filled the house where they were seated. Uh, I want to sidetrack on one note. A few weeks ago before one of our big youth conferences in July, my body had completely shut down. I had a, I don't know what happened. I think it was a demonic attack, to be honest with you. And I had lost all energy. And I was telling my kids, I don't know that I'll be able to preach. And they said, you know, my daughter said, Dad, you got to preach. You know, we got 4,000 kids coming and they're expecting you to preach. Right. And I went over to a lodge that we had built and I shut the door. And I had my grandmother's old prayer blanket. I got an old blanket that, you know, grandma slept on. I'm talking about one of them old, look like a hundred year old blankets. And I wrapped up in it and I laid on this little uh, Murphy's bed that pulls down and it's a private office area. And I just began to pray and I said, God, I am so tired. And this happened before the Lord in heaven, this happened. I have heard the air conditioner go on in that room and, that, and I know what it sounds like. I thought the air unit kicked in, but it's coming from the other room into this room. And it goes, Ooh. it got so loud that it, my ears start hurting. It filled the room. And I'm telling you, I have never been more terrified in my life. Could this have been what happened in Pentecost? Thank you. Ab you know what? Absolutely. The first thing that came to my mind, yes. I heard the Holy Spirit say, a sound from heaven like a wind. A sound from heaven like a right. wind. Now, I didn't see fire. It's dark because I'm laying there in the dark. I don't have lights on. But man, it lasted. And my hair is standing up. And the Holy Spirit energized me supernaturally. And the next day I had, yeah, the next day I had, I had some of our young people and I said, you know what, we got conference coming up, let's take a break. And we went up to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee at my favorite place, the Pancake Pantry. And we <laughs> ate and hung out and we sang songs and shouted and laughed and spoke in tongues and just all the way up and all the way back. And I preached that conference and felt as much strength as I do right now.
So the, the Spirit of God, you know, when we, when we talk about the manifestation of the glory of the Lord, one of the things we have to understand is the joy of the Lord is our strength, and the Holy Spirit gives us supernatural strength when we need it. When Elijah was under that tree, he had an appointment under a Jennifer right, tree. Right, I'm going to tell know? you something that I believe, Pat. Yeah. I believe that if you have faith in the promises of God, mm -hmm. there's no reason when you get older, come on, such as I am, that every cell of your body cannot be energized yes, stronger sir. than when you were 30 years of age. Come on. I believe that. Harry, but come I want to get to more secrets yeah. uh, of the spirit world yeah. with you. Okay. For instance, your, your dad, who I had the privilege of meeting, yeah. uh, uh, is... He gave was, you a prophetic word, too. He God did. was going to use you. He did. And the, well, the, prophet, well, the one he gave me has not, to my knowledge, happened yet. Yeah. But it's about ready to happen. Yeah. He said, one, uh, one day, Sid, you will be speaking in a supernatural language on the air, and you will get letters that people understood, understood. what you were That's saying. Right. Do you remember him? That's right. Prophesying sure that to me? Yes. But... Just before your dad was promoted to heaven, he gave you some advice. What did he tell you? Okay, we're sitting in the house, and he had was 78 years of age at the time, and he said, I had a dream. And he said, in this, and I'm going to make the dream real short, but he said, in this dream, I'm in a church service, and I'm seeing the enemy attack people. I'm seeing him attack people, and he talked about the, the, the sexual sins. He talked about temptation. He talked about pressures. He talked about depression. He said, all this was coming against God's people. And then he said, the Lord told me this, and he said, I'm going to tell you this because I'm not going to live long enough to tell people this. I can't go out and preach now because he was getting up there in you. And so I said, okay, what is it? He says, now when the Spirit of God quickens this to you, you tell people that the solution to the attacks that are coming, and this is his exact words, they must learn to pray excessively in the Spirit. Then I said, now, Dan, what are you... Excuse me, I just have to give you a commentary right now. Paul made it even stronger. Yes, he did. He said, I yeah. pray without ceasing. Yeah, but, but he said, ahead. I speak with tongues more than all of you. Yes. So that's praying in the Spirit. No, he was Southern. He said, I speak with tongues more, more than, than y'all. Y'all. That's what he says. That's what it says in the King James. <laughs> exactly. And so, uh, and so I said, Dad, what do you mean by excessively? He says, not your normal worshiping in church, not your normal praying in the Spirit, going to work. He said, you're going to have to go into a prayer chamber and pray in the Spirit sometimes for 30 minutes to an hour to break stuff that's on you. He said, if you don't pray, and he looked at me and says this, if you and this generation does not learn how to pray in the Spirit, you're going to come under attacks that you're going to have a hard time coming out from, out from under. It's mandatory. Yeah, it's, it's a mandatory thing. And so um, when he said this to me about praying excessively, he says, now, do you remember your Uncle Rufus? Now, let me explain who Uncle Rufus was in case we get into a story about him. Rufus Stumford was my dad's uncle, and Rufus Stumford had a gift that when he was saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, he could speak in diverse tongues of any language in the world go up to any foreigner in the coal fields of West Virginia that worked in the mines of anywhere in the world and speak to them in tongues because a lot of those people came from other countries and they couldn't speak English well. So nobody could witness to him. So he preached to them and witnessed to them and they just thought he knew the language. Uh, they even thought he was a Catholic priest when he speak Latin. They call him <laughs> Father Dumford because <laughs> they, they, they thought he was a Catholic priest. Now. When Dad said, do you remember Uncle, your Uncle Rufus? said, your Uncle Rufus every morning would pray on his knees. And that's why my dad, I pray walking or standing up. But my dad never prayed without praying on his knees because he said, Rufus told him, for this cause I bow my knees before the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so my dad never prayed without praying on his knees. But Rufus would pray till his daughter, and his daughter happens to attend, attend, attends a Baptist church in uh, Norfolk, Virginia, I believe. But she said, I watched my dad pray in tongues. And he would bounce on the floor. He would get anointed. And when the glory would hit him, he'd bounce on his knees all over the place. And you'd think the ceiling was going to fall in downstairs at the kitchen. <laughs> now, Rufus would pray so long in the spirit. But when he would come out, he would say to, my, he would say to dad, the Lord just told us we've got to drive two hours down the road and pray for this person. And dad said, what are you talking about? And he would have a word of knowledge about someone's need or someone's situation. And his wife, I wish they'd have given me the book. I didn't ask for the book, but I have no idea what happened. She had before and after pictures. They would take pictures of people with cancers on their face.
before he prayed and cancers a month later after they were completely healed. I mean, they had before. She showed me this girl had this. Here's the before and after. This one had this. Here's an older picture of her when she couldn't walk. Here she is walking around, standing up, praising God. I mean, this was... So when you say, and I say this very humbly before the Lord, that the Lord let me be raised around men personally. Now, this is not an Internet story. Who knew to hear the voice of the Lord and respond to it that quick. The one that you know, we talked about earlier, that one of the mistakes the church makes is to customize services for right. people and not permit the Holy Spirit. The second thing we do is we pray, but we don't listen. I can't tell you how many times I'd be talking to my wife and I'd say, Honey, I'm here. And she says, Yes, you're hearing, but you're not listening. Look at all the, all the women laughing. They know what I'm talking about. You're hearing... But you're not listening. So my dad said this to me. He said, everybody I know that knows how to pray can pray, but some of them don't know how to hear. They're not listening. Now, in the Spirit, and I feel the anointing real strong right now, in the Spirit of God, you have to learn the voice of God, and you have to learn to act at that moment. Too many people sit in a service and feel impressed to give something and they talk themselves out of it. They think, maybe I feel like I should talk to this person. They're new and just maybe minister mm -hmm. to them. Well, I better not. I should call this person. Yeah, I, 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 that's right. It. And you, you, know, you, you find out later they were depressed and about to kill themselves. Right. And your call would have come at the perfect time or you find out that they're about to divorce and you've got this word. You know, you're saying there, honey, the Lord just showed me that you and your husband are in a, you've been in an argument and you're really don't do what you're about to do. And I'm telling you, you would be shocked at how, how often the spirit of the Lord can use the body of Christ. But we just aren't paying. Listen, I get in a cab. I'm in Nevada. And I get a cab. We're on vacation. And I get in the cab and I turn to the gentleman. And, you know, people in the this 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 42 Muslim countries a person could be from. I said, sir, you're from Egypt. He looks at me and says, this is true. <laughs> and I said, you're, you were, you're from Cairo. He said, this is true. I said, you've been here 10 years. And he got so afraid of me, he shut down and couldn't get me out of that place fast enough. <laughs> And I started, then I started talking to him about his family and stuff, and I think it, but then the reason God does that is to prove that the Spirit of God is real and to convince, if you'll read Paul's writings in 1 Corinthians 14, it's to convince the unbeliever that the secrets of his heart are manifest. Okay, I yeah. need you to repeat something to me. Okay. Before your father was, uh, went to heaven, yeah. he gave you some advice. He said, pray in tongues excessively. Excessively. Yes. You see, here's what I believe when you're praying in tongues. Not only you're praising God well, right. but right. you are getting the junk of the world that's, that's exactly attached right. to you. That's right. And you have no idea. Now, there are many of you that pray in supernatural languages, but you don't pray much. You maybe prayed last year. Right. You know what I mean? I think you're going to change. And then there are others that have never prayed in a language because they're a little confused. They don't realize there's different types of tongues in the Bible. There's yeah. one type of tongues that's in a public service. Right. And not all, that's what it says in Corinthians, not all have that gift. But everyone, yes. I mean, Paul would not have, uh, have used the southern term, I wish you all. <laughs> prayed in tongues if he didn't mean it. You can all have a private devotional prayer That's language right. and you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it with what's coming on this earth. Perry, yeah. could you very quickly lead everyone to the Lord Look in the camera yes, and lead yes. everyone to the Lord and pray for everyone to be filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues. All right. First thing we want to do, you have to repent. So let's pray a prayer of repentance. Everybody in the studio, if you want to agree with us and pray, this is fine. Say this with me. Father in heaven. Father in heaven. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm coming to you. I'm coming Asking to you. you. Asking you. Forgive me. Forgive of me. Of all my sin. Of all my sin. Hidden sin. Hidden sin. Secret sin. Secret sin. Public sins. Public sins. Anything. 
And it's that, pleasing to you, God. It's just pleasing to you. Forgive me. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Right now. Right now. Help me, Lord. Help me. To Lord. walk in victory. To walk in To victory. walk in faith. To walk in To follow faith. you. Follow you. And to have deliverance. And to have deliverance. In my life. In my life. And heart. And heart. Today, today, I receive Jesus I receive as Lord Jesus and Savior. As Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Now, now, this is going to take two minutes. I'm going to give you three things. I'm going to tell you what I tell folks. I've had 200,000 people baptized in the Holy Spirit in meetings in America. All right? Number one, the same faith that you're saved with is the same faith you receive the Holy Spirit with. You don't have to have a greater faith, more faith, pray more faith in. If you can believe what I'm saying, you have faith. Number two, when we ask the Holy Spirit to come in, you have to ask Him to come in and baptize you, fill you. He will do what you ask Him if you'll believe. Number three, the Bible says that when they were filled, they spoke with tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. And I'd like to say it this way, they spoke as the Spirit gave them inspired words. And when you're praying for the Holy Spirit and you've asked Him to come in, it's happened to me, it happens to everybody I've ever met, you will at some moment hear the Holy Spirit speaking to you, and it's your spirit praying. Your spirit's receiving the power of God. And when you hear those words coming into your spirit, and you're, you're hearing it, speak it with your mouth, and you'll feel the power of God be released, okay? So right now, say this with me. Everybody, let's pray this together. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. According to your word. According to your According word, to your promise. According to your promise. I receive. I receive. The gift. The gift. Of the Holy Ghost. Of the Holy Ghost. Right now. Now. Right now. Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Fill me. Fill me. Baptize me. Baptize in me. God's power. In God's and power. And with the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit. Right now. Right now. Say this with me. I receive. I receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Now. Now. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now lift your hands and start worshiping. Pray, praise oh, God. Halamoroshe la rabate te cofre stando respira catoleres o la mapatar carome teleroso torrela. Father, we worship you in spirit and truth. Everybody watching right now, wherever you're watching. Put your hands up and just bless the Lord out loud. Just bless Him out loud. We love you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Man, I feel something all over me right now. I feel the power of God. Hallelujah right now. I sense His presence. Thank you, Lord. Lord, all across the airwaves, all across the country, all across the world, let the Spirit of God come right now. Oh, hallelujah. Right now, right now, right now, Holy Spirit in the Middle East, right now, right there in the Middle East, let the Spirit of God come. Someone that's of a Muslim background, you're beginning to believe in Jesus, you haven't followed through, you prayed that prayer just now. God's going to give you a sign right now, I'm feeling this right now somewhere in the world. Let the Spirit of God come to you now in the name of Jesus. Let the Spirit of God come to you now and just begin to pray. You're not going to pray in Arabic or Aramaic, you're going to pray in a language right now. Everybody in the congregation, lift up your voice. Let's just keep, let's keep this. Something's happening right now. Receive as a sign to you that Christ is Messiah. As a sign to you that the word of the Lord is real. Receive the power of God. I'm going to pray in the Holy Spirit for just a minute. Sid, the Lord told me to pray in the Holy Spirit. Somebody's going to understand what I'm saying. So it doesn't need to be interpreted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants to, you to know He's real, that Christ is real, that Jesus is who He said He was, that He is the Messiah. He is the Savior and the Redeemer, the weight that you have been under. The Lord Jesus will lift that from you if you are willing to believe that He is whom the angel Gabriel said, that He is the Son of the living God, that He is the Redeemer. Believe it with all of your heart right now. Believe it with all of your heart. Hallelujah. And, hallelujah. Boy, the anointing is and, heavy. And what oh, I hallelujah. believe hallelujah. is that 
Many of Hallelujah. you have spoken your Glory supernatural to language, to God. but a few Glory of you did not Glory do it yet. Yes. You know what? You'll never hear it until you speak it. Right. But once you start Hallelujah. speaking it, you will hear it. You can't. You, uh, you can't speak in uh, English if you don't move your lips and your and Ooh. your tongue and enunciate. You. But this is coming from your belly, from your spirit. Yes. So don't yes. wait to yes. hear yes. it here. Yes. Wait to speak Ooh. it from here. Hallelujah. Now Perry was given seven Praise words God. from an angel that changed his life and it's going to change your life be right back we will return with more of our special presentation of secrets of the spirit world in just one an angel you heard seven angel words that have changed your history yeah. Tell me about that. Robert Kimberling was pastoring a church years ago in South Dakota. This happened to a woman who was a member of his church. It was in the 1920s during the Dust Bowl. Her cow had gotten cut on a fence, had maggots, was dying. Her husband had tuberculosis, was dying. They were about to lose their farm. And she was seeking God. And I'm, I'm really abbreviating this. And she saw... They call it a dust devil. It's that wind that just starts stirring right. like a little tornado, and it starts coming toward her, and she says, Lord, what else can I take? And all of a sudden, the dust ceased, and a man stepped out of it, and it was an angel of the Lord, told her that her husband would be healed, and they would live to birth more children, told her that the cow was going to be healed. And by the way, the, the maggots fell out of the cow's belly. God stitched the cow up supernaturally, and the cow lived. Okay, you're, you're stretching a lot oh, of people. Oh, listen, now. listen. <laughs> I, hey, this and this is what because she promised to give the cow to world missions if God healed it. Now, when she said to this man who was an angel of God, "If God heals this cow, I'll sell it for world missions," the angel got angry at her and looked at her and said, "Liz, seven words. There are no ifs in God's plan. There are no ifs." And. When Brother Kimberling told me this, and it's a lot more detailed than that, and all her husband got healed, they had more, more kids. But when he told me this, God changed my life, and let me explain why. I was praying a lot of prayers over my boy that was addicted to alcohol and drugs, who's now delivered. But I was praying back then, Lord, if you'll just touch him. And I would say to my armor bearer, Robbie, Robbie, if the Lord touches Jonathan. And I kept saying, if, if, if. And there would be so many times I'd say, we're going to build this building if the money comes in. And the Lord told me, he said, when you say if, you are always delaying it and you're questioning me. He said, think about if. If I, you're saying what God can't do. He said, do you realize the reason your boy's not been delivered is Satan can come before me and say, he don't even believe you. Perry Stone doesn't even believe you because he's questioning if you're even able. And I said, Lord, how do I change my prayer? He said, quit saying if and say when. I'd say... When my boy gets delivered, when my son comes to God, when that money comes in, and I'm telling you, everything started changing, Sid, when I, ch when I took the if out. See, a man came to Jesus and said, if you will make me whole, and Jesus said, I will. He took the if out. And so there's the if of Satan. If of Satan is if you be the son of God. Mm. If you, all right? The if of Satan is always making you doubt the word. The only if God has is conditional on if my people are called by my name. The condition is not on God because he doesn't have the if. The condition is on us. Are we going to obey? Okay. And so when I began to take the if out, and those seven words, I told Brother Kimberly, I said, you just changed my life. That story from 1929, right around 29, depression. And I want people to know that when you pray, quit praying if. Quit talking if after you pray and start using the phrase, Brother, let me tell you something. When, when God gets ready, when God does this, when this comes through, here's what we're going to do. And he, he taught me a lesson that I, I still to this day will catch myself and I'll say, God, forgive me. You have no ifs in your plan. But you know how I know he has no ifs? Because it says the promises of God are yea and amen. Oh, oh. And amen. Amen means so be it. And without faith, you can't please God. So no wonder if can't be in the believer's yeah. vocabulary. Yeah. Right. yeah. Now, I, I, I want to tell you this. After this broadcast ends, you can continue watching the same guest, same spirit, 
this live event on ISN, the It's Supernatural Network. Now, to continue watching on ISN, just log on to sidroth.org slash ISN or download our free ISN app. To download the app, just go to the App Store, type in my name, Sid Roth, and select the orange ISN app. Download it now. That's the only way to get to the miracle portion that Perry prophesied is going to happen. Now, when we return, Kent Henry is going to... I, I know that God has something special in store for everyone. For you watching in, in your television and you in the studio audience, and I'm beginning to get words of knowledge. Words of knowledge uh -huh. are words from God. Uh -huh. What that means is uh, there's no if, <laughs> as Perry said. There's no if, as that angel said. It's y yes and amen. Yes, and so be it. Early this morning, I was praying, and I saw people being healed in their entire bodies of any arthritic condition. Oh. Arthritic knees, arthritic fingers, wrists, carpal tunnel, uh, fingers, uh, any arthritic backs, oh. arthritic legs. Our shoulders, Jesus, you are free. You know the truth, oh. and the truth has set you free. Oh. Okay. You're so good. Now, Kent, if you have any words, and Perry, or any, you feel impressed to say something, any of you, it's kind of free. It's a, it's a tag team. <laughs> <laughs> I was, you know, when we were coming over here, and I knew that we would have this moment, and I'm not sure if this is for someone here or if it's someone watching. But the Spirit of the Lord said to me, there are people who the enemy has attacked their mind that they've blasphemed the Holy Ghost. And some of this is a result of there was times that you were disobedient to the Lord and you have not felt... Now, this, is, this may be for someone here, and if it is, you need to let me know because we can pray for you, but it may be for someone at home. But... What happened is there was a time when you were close to the Lord, you, did, got, you got into disobedience, and since you've tried to come back, and you have tried to come back, you feel as though you're not at the level spiritually you were. You don't have the joy that you used to have. And, and you, you, never, you didn't blaspheme. The enemy's telling you this to try to make you quit and give up. Okay? Is there anyone in the audience? Right here, honey, stand up if you would. Yeah, but but let me just mention one thing about... Please stand up yeah, to people. Get, get to. But let me just mention one thing. If you are worried that you have blasphemed That's the right. Holy Spirit, you, you haven't! That's right. That's right. If you're worried, right. you haven't! That's right. That's it. <laughs> now, now, right now, right now, I want... I want Couple of ladies, put your hand on this sister. Couple of ladies, stand up, put your hand right over on this sister. Just touch her on the shoulder, right there, real quick. Gotta do this real quick. Now I'm going to pray, and I, it's the, the, what this is. It's the spirit of shame. Well, the but, Lord but says Perry, it's the spirit of shame. In addition to pray, praying for these two, pray for the people at home. That that's, many that's right. At home that's right. And you at home, you, you you at home. If you're at your computer, wherever you're at, or whatever, you need to stand up. And, and put your hands up now. Now, everybody, point your hands toward him right now. I rebuke the spirit of shame in the name of Jesus. Be gone right now. Now, both of you ladies, raise your hands. Father God, right now, go ahead and just receive. Open up your mouth and say, "Lord, I receive." Lord, I receive right now in Jesus' name. Lord, take this away by the power of God. Right now, take it away. Oh, hallelujah. There you go. Go, that's right. Let the Spirit of God pray through you. Let the Spirit of God pray through you. Father, take this out right now in yes. Jesus' name. We release her in her mind. Oh, oh, there we go. 
in her spirit. Loose her in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. And stretch your hallelujah. hand out for the hallelujah. people Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, folks at home, Spirit of God, move upon them right now. I speak to you, Holy Spirit, to go right where they are, right where these individuals are. This lying spirit, it's nothing but a spirit of shame that's trying to condemn them, to tell them that God is not with them. I come against it in the name of Jesus right now. You go from the people, you set them free, Holy Spirit, right where they are. Somebody at home, I see a woman. I see a woman, you're wearing glasses. You just took your glasses down because you're starting to cry. <laughs> you couldn't cry like that if you blasphemed the Holy Spirit. That devil is a liar. You're weeping because the Spirit of God is coming on you. I'm telling you, that's, that's, that's going on right now. Praise God. Okay. Hallelujah. There, there, are, there, Hallelujah. there is someone Hallelujah. in a hospital room Ooh. watching us right now. The doctor has given you a oh. death sentence. It has to do with your heart. I say in Jesus' you name, go. you will live and not, and die. not die and, and declare, declare the, the works of the Lord. Lord. Harry, you, you, it came right out of your mouth. Yeah, I know yeah, it was yeah, not yeah. preconceived. No, no. I know what yeah. you said Ooh. about, tell us Jesus. just a little bit about some of the gifting that people have prayed for, laid hands on you when, for. When my uncle that could speak all those languages was about to die, I didn't know he was about to die, but I went to West Virginia when I was 18, had him lay hands on me and ask him. I didn't actually ask him. He, he prayed in tongues and said, what did I say? And I said, I don't know. He said, you better learn how to interpret. And then, I, then, then, he, then he did. Then he speaks in tongues again. He said, what did the Lord say? I said, the Lord said, that he, I'm going to get your anointing when you die. He said, that's it. I was never so glad to hear from God in my life. <laughs> He's, this guy was scary. Now, now, after he prayed for me, two things happened. The first, the first miracle I ever saw, uh, a boy healed. His granddaddy carried him and he couldn't walk and he he, I played basketball with him the next day. And the second one was the gift of tongues. It started operating where signs and wonders happened through that gift. That was his anointing, that same anointing he had. The Holy Spirit, it's his anointing, but he gives right. those gifts to people. Now, I understand as much as anybody you'll ever meet the power of transferring anointings and giftings, just like in 2 Kings 2 with the two prophets you read about in the Bible. But there's two, three things I've got to tell you, and this is going to take about a minute and a half. Number one, Covet earnestly the best gift. And that word covet sounds like a negative word to us, but in Greek it means desire heavily right. the best gift. Now what's the best gift? It's the one that works best at the situation you're in. Okay, <laughs> you, you may have a gift, but you may need a different one for this and a different one for that. So you have to covet earnestly the best gift. Which means how do you want to be used by the Lord? God doesn't give these gifts for you just to go to church and lay hands and prophesy over church folks. Hello. Come on. God gives you gifts to be signs and wonders to the unbeliever and to minister to help people. And number three is there's an impartation that comes and when this man prayed for me, this happened. After he prayed, I felt liquid fire. I can't describe it any other way. Go up my hands, down my back, across my neck. And I had to drive home an hour, about an hour and a half to Salem, Virginia, maybe two hours, and felt that all night long. So I knew something had happened because it, it was a touch all the way to the bone. Now, when the Spirit of God gets ready to move in a moment, I want you to ask Him, Holy Spirit, I want you to use me in this area. And you're not, you're not asking for self-gratification, for self-glory. You're not asking to be, be somebody call you a prophet or a prophet. In fact, if you're a real one, you won't even announce it. Other people will recognize it. But you won't have to run around saying, I'm a prophet of so-and-so, a prophet of so-and-so. And let me tell you something, a real prophet will tell you you ain't living right, too. He's not just going to always prophesy blessing over you. I, a real prophet will come to your church and say, Mr. Elder right there, you're causing trouble for the pastor. God's going to kill you like that. And it's a fire if you don't straighten up. You say, no, God's not going to do that. No real people of God that hear from God can, sh can show the bad things that's about to happen, but the good things that's about to happen. All right. Now, having said that, I want you to put your hands up right now, and I'm going to start praying. Yeah. But wait, wait, wait one no. second. You ready? Especially the people at home. I have a heart yeah. for these yeah, people. Yeah, absolutely. Now, here's what I believe. I believe oh. that we are in Hallelujah. the glory. 
I believe oh, this oh. is an, uh, and can't oh. you understand what I'm saying, where there's an atmospheric uh -huh. anointing yeah. right. in uh -huh. this place uh -huh. that'll go right through your, uh, your smartphone, yes, it right will. through your computer, yes. and right from as we pray, it's not so much Terry laying hands That's right. on you. That's right. It's you believing. Right. right. You're believing. Right. It's not if, it's now. now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, you at home, if you desire this, and I know many of you do, to be used by the Lord, put your hands up right where you are. At home. Here, sit, come over here. The anointing of God's coming heavy. So now, I'm going to pray in the Spirit at first because the Holy Spirit's power is real. Ooh! Spirit Kotele Mospita Roto Neke Asiporande Tohilara Soprato Canelo Naito Seprando Nekankilat Bido Cospeta Reda Barretan Sopralo Cori Melalango Repatosa Le Cotamino Catesara Vido Silarambre Cotamito Umbro Woo. Father, 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 wow. in the name of the Son of God, wow. the Lord Jesus, the Yeshua, the Messiah. God, we come to you now and we ask you, God, to, as Paul said, to impart spiritual gifts. Lord, these gifts have been neglected, but they've always existed. These gifts have been neglected in the church, but they've always been there. You have never taken one gift away from your people. Your people have become cold and neglected. They've but right now, oh, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I come to you, God, and I'm asking you to impart the gifts of the Spirit, the ones that are best for the people right now. Lift up your voice and cry out to God that you want that right now. Cry out to God right now. In the name, 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 in the name. God, those watching right now at home, let the Spirit of God move to where they are. Let the anointing of God be released upon them right now. Oh, God for sin. Oh, Lord, use him, Lord God. Let the words spoken over him many years ago be fulfilled soon in the name of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we impart, God, what you've given to us, such as we have, God, through your Spirit, such as we have, God, by your grace. We give and we release in the name, in the name of the Lord, by the power the Holy Spirit. We release those things that are good. We release them. You said, Heavenly Father, to stir up the gift that's within us, which was given to us, God, through the laying on of hands and prayer. So now stir it up. Everybody, everybody that's in this room, put your hands up and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Some of you, your language is going to change. Some of you start praying in tongues, your language is going to change. God's going to give you a new tongue. A new tongue. Hallelujah. Those of you at home, come on, do it. Don't just watch this. Participate right where you are and raise those hands to God and open up your mouth and open up your voice and open up your spirit because God can touch you anywhere in the world. The Holy Spirit can touch you anywhere in the world. This is your gifting. This is your anointing that needs to be released in this area. It needs to be released around the world. Now stir it up, God, in the name of Jesus. Put your hand upon the people. Put your presence upon the people. Stir up the gift on the inside. Rekindle the fire on the inside. Fires that have died in the Spirit, God. Stir it back up again. Gifts, God, that once existed, that people have allowed, they've ignored them, and they have not followed through with them. Stir them up in the name, in the name, in the name, in the name, in the name. Hallelujah. In the name. In the name. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, 
Dilla to me, parro da taxi, arroba barreketa. Thank you Lord, 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 thank you Lord. Stir it up, stir it up, Lord. Stir it up, God. Stir it up, God. Change people's hearts, change their life, change their thinking, change their attitude, change Heavenly Father. Those things that the enemy have tried to do, turn it around. Give a turn around anointing, God. In the name of the Son of God. In the name of the King of Glory. In the name of the King of Kings. By your Spirit, not by might, not by power, God, but by your Spirit. Do something special. Impart those things. Right now, God, impart according to your word. Impart according to your will. Impart, impart according to your presence is here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be. Blessed be. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh glory. Oh glory. Oh glory. Oh glory. Oh glory. Hallelujah. 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 Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. So Kurre Nasa and Eborre Nasa. The Spirit of God wants to, wants me to give give this one word to you about operating in any gift. If you have words of wisdom or word of knowledge, or you feel like in your spirit, and this is for folks at home too, that maybe He's giving you something, and sometimes we're not sure. You've been there. You just kind of, is this the Lord or is this me? I never go up to anybody and say, the Lord told me to tell you this. Because if you miss it, you, you disqualify yourself from speaking to them again. Okay? Does that make sense? But if I'm not sure, because there's times I know it's God. It burns in me and I know it. And I'm, I, I can just look at you and say it is. So cool. If you're not sure, but you think you're getting something, what I do is I'll go up to somebody. This is in the church. I was asking the folks, I'm hearing something. I'm feeling something in my spirit. Now, you're going to have to judge this. But I want to I share this with you. And then you share with the person what you're hearing and feeling. Then if they say, you know what, I've been praying about that. Or yes, I was asking God about that last week. Or you know, that just happened to me. Then, but never get puffed up. Never get puffed up like, boy, God spoke to me because pride will bring every gift to a halt in your life, okay? Always be humble when God uses you, and then you have to test it. Because I remember the first time I spoke in tongues and gave a message in a little church when I was 18. It scared me bad. And I was like, oh, God, is that really you? you know? And I knew it was the Lord because it came so fast. But my point is that too many people go out and say, God said, God said, God said, and God never said. They got a gift of suspicion and not the gift of the Spirit. Right. They heard something on somebody, now they're going to act like they're going to prophesy over something they heard. Come on, I'm talking to you. And my daddy always said, never say God said unless you have 100% peace and confidence that He did. Now you'll learn that. It's like a baby. A baby spits up, but he quits spitting up when he gets older. If my boy spit up at 27, I'd slap him, and I wouldn't slap him when he was three. You grow up and you mature in this. You learn how to flow in the Spirit. But the only way you can learn to flow is gradually test what you're feeling. Gradually test like, you know, I, you know I've been around people, and the Lord would say, I'd be at a restaurant, and the Lord would say to me, that person needs $140. I said, well, that's a lot of money. And I'd get money out and I'd say, sir, can I ask you a question? Why do you need $140? And they look at me and say, who told you that? I said, well, I'm just asking. They said, well,